What do you do once you have an idea? You need to validate it. And the only reasonable way to validate it is to build a minimum viable product. As Eric Ries, the author of the Lean Startup wrote, an MVP helps entrepreneurs start the process of learning as quickly as possible. Leo and I decided to build the most simple yet useful version of this product and release it to the world as soon as possible. We've got together on a brainstorming session to discuss this first version. Before this call, Karin only briefly described his idea. My first goal was to understand if the problem his wife had is a widespread one. Who needs to transcribe audio to text? Who is the audience of transcriptor? And who would pay for such service? Do you think uh, a lot of people need something like that? Uh, is uh, I mean, uh, if there's the, the issue that uh, that your wife encountered is something unique, or it's a common issue, and a lot of people uh, do this in their everyday tasks? She was mentioning that, like at least in her study group, she has at least two, three other students who has the same issue, who would need to do some kind oh, of. Oh, students! Students is a, a core audience, I guess. I think that, like among students, it would be uh, a big need for this kind of tools. Yeah. Because they often need that to do audio recordings. Another group that has exactly. the same issue could be journalists, because they also need to record interviews quite often, and then they need to transcribe to prepare the article for the magazine. Yeah, true. And what about common people like uh, on everyday uh, work? Well, I, 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 I don't have um, any idea about it, but that's probably just professionals. Yeah, I think it's you're just a tool for professionals because in most day-to-day -day tasks, you don't need to transcribe audio to text. But for example, when we make videos, for MKDF channel, we also sometimes need to get the text out of it. And what we currently do sometimes is just we type out the text by listening to what was said. Even though sometimes you have the script, but some people who work on the videos, they just improvise. And there are lots of pieces of audio that are not part of the script. And then we need to make subtitles yeah. for YouTube, for example. Yeah, I agree. We've got a basic idea about who would use transcriptor, students and working professionals who need to transcribe audio to text as part of their study or job assignments. First and foremost, this includes journalists, also secretaries, personal assistants and people who are involved in content creation. With our core audience in mind, we started discussing existing solutions on the market. Could it be that the problem we tried to solve is already solved? Did you make uh, any research? Uh, ab about similar products on the market already. Uh, what do they offer and how they work uh, and so on? I was checking a couple of them. Like I found the two groups of products that are out there. One of them is purely technical, some kind of cloud solutions that you can use for your own software. And the second group is really these huge professional applications for transcription, which normally charge up to 30, 40 uh, euros per hour of audio. Why so expensive? Yeah, that also makes no sense for me because if you look at the technology that allows you to do this transcription, it's like tens or hundreds of euro per minute of audio. So it should really be cheap to do it. And all of these services charge much more than it could be. And maybe you could- Probably, they, probably they have uh, other features uh, like, uh, I don't know, um, spell checker or something. Yeah, I noticed some of them, they have like a really comprehensive editor, so you, you're not only getting the transcription, but you also have this web-based text editor, and maybe some translations and integration with other tools. Audio editor maybe too. Yeah, yeah, like automatic noise reduction and all of this. And I think there is, could be a place for something much simpler, so we could just focus on really only on transcription part. Like you just get the text and that's it. And this way, is this set of features you can make it much cheaper. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Because uh, when we do this, um, obviously there will be demand for some uh, other features that clients need and they um, will ask if they will ask uh, for more, we will give it. But for now, to make it launch, 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 
<laughs> we will uh, start with um, uh, minimum valuable. Yeah, okay. especially, especially if you think about students, they don't have really big budget. And if you pay Absolutely. 50 euros per hour and you have 12 hours of audio, you have to pay like 600 euros for your thesis. It's just super yeah. expensive. And I think you can make it like a fraction of that. It seems like Kirill already did some initial competition research. There are indeed various transcription services out there. But all of them are either built for developers or a big expensive products with lots of different features. We, in contrary, would like to build something cheap, simple and focused on one thing – transcribing audio to text. It might seem like creating an intentionally simple product is easy. But we already learned from the experience that making something simple requires a lot of thinking. On one side, we want to develop and release Transcripto as soon as possible, without investing too much time into too many features. On the other side, Transcripto still needs to bring value to the customers. There is a risk that if we make it too simple, we might end up with a primitive and worthless software. Thus, we started discussing which features we should focus on in our MVP. To make the discussion a bit more productive, we are using Miro, a real-time collaboration tool. Miro allows us to work together on an infinite digital whiteboard and we've used it a lot at MKDF to plan redesigns, new features and for any other kind of sessions. The most obvious feature of Transcripto is of course transcribed speech to text. The second one that we quickly agreed on is per minute pricing. Transcripto needs to work for audio files of every size, even if you have 5 minutes audio. What about receiving the transcription results? How do we want to do this? If you have the two hours of audio, then maybe sending it per email is not convenient. Now that you mention it, that's probably not the best idea. Uh, probably we should send them a file and store a text file uh, for them in the uh, account. On the menu, website. The website, right email is unencrypted by default and these transcripts can have some sensitive data maybe we should just like send a notification that it's ready but storage on the website only so you can ensure that it's accessed or https so and... the e email only contains uh, a message that the transcription is ready and you can read it by clicking on the link yeah yeah, it sounds like yeah, it's ready and you can see it there. Yeah, and I we... think that's uh, the easiest way. <laughs> yeah, let's do it like this. So I'll write down that we need to like store and access all the previous transcriptions. Yeah. Having agreed upon the way we want to handle the access to transcriptions without sacrificing the security, we exchanged a couple of other ideas we had in mind. Not all of them made sense, though, especially for the MVP. I mean, uh, I, I mean being able to edit and format, add formatting to the text uh, or directly on the site. Sharing with like colleagues could be useful for journalists because I would guess like there are a couple of people working on the same interview, for example. So it's good to share it with, let's say, editor. Uh. I think I, th I think we sh we should make another round of brainstorming for future for for future ab updates, and for now focus okay. on on MVP. Finally, we settled on the small list of just the four things Transcripto needs to have. To make sure we are on the same page, we drew some diagrams to visualize the workflow. What does the Transcripto customer do, and how it works behind the scenes? To get a complete picture of an MVP into our heads, we decided to sketch initial wireframes of the application. How Transcripto would look like? Which design decisions can we make already today? First thing we figured is that we want to keep the number of pages as small as possible. If we can keep the sign-up form on the landing page, why would we do otherwise? Obviously, we need a page to, to register or not because we can make it on the main page why do we need a separate page for for making a new yeah, exactly yeah i mean if i'm not logged in then i can just register from this page another important question is can we add a bunny to the design and won't it look like something else 
See? A bunny. Okay, there's like the bunny was one line away from two dicks. <laughs> <laughs> we also spent a bit of time discussing if we need a separate FAQ page, which led to a free trial and samples topic. Do we, I mean, maybe just to reduce the number of questions we have, we need another page for FAQ? FAQ. Now that you said, say this, uh, I'm starting to see, do we need um, maybe samples for users so that they don't ask questions, they just download the sample? It was like I see two ways, mean? it's either I mean, if it's either perfect sample, like everything is just like an audio and then it's suspicious, or it's a shitty sample and then you don't want to pay for a service that makes bad transcription. Yeah, I see what you're talking about. In the end, we agreed on trying to add a free trial instead of just providing some samples. This is something that we should definitely investigate uh, if we are able to make uh, free trials, at least yes. five minutes, or should I, um, I one minute, uh, three minutes, or doesn't matter. Okay. We will figure it out. Uh, we should do this so that you will be able to test it before start using yeah. it. Yeah, true. I'll take a look at pricing and see like, one thing I can say now is that we have to force people to register to use the trial. Otherwise, like you can just write a bot to uh, drive us to bankruptcy. <laughs> actually, at least there should be like a sign up form with some capture so that legitimate persons can register and try the trial. Yeah, I agree. After a lengthy discussion about the design, we were ready to get to work. We have enough info about who our customers are, what our focus is on, and which features we need. And even we have the first visual representation of the transcriptor. The next steps we agreed on is that I will develop the first prototype that would implement the complete workflow, except the payment part. While I work on this, Leo will create the logo for the product and also define the main design elements, colors, and so on. We were completely ready to get to real work but there was just one more thing we had to do before closing the call. Great. That's way better than your handwriting. <laughs> That's one fat bunny here. Without legs. It's legs. All right, let's get to work. Let's get to work. Do you see it? No. Nope. <laughs> Here again. Look, look, square. So what? I. <laughs> This is how I see your square. Uh, um, wait. All right, this is going great. Yeah, it works. Amazing. Finally. How do you rate right. me? <laughs>